Thank you, Rachel, for that beautiful welcoming to worship on this Lord's Day. Glad you could join us on this sunny, little cool morning here as we gather together at Shatek and Dover churches to praise and thank God for the many blessings God bestows upon us. Our opening hymn, Morning Has Broken. We want to say welcome to our guests and visitors with us uh, today. Glad you could join us. Also, those streaming online and dialing into our worship. Glad you could join us through that medium. Our morning prayer is up before us. I'll read the light print if you'll respond with the bold. Oh, Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness. O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. You redeem my life from the grave and crown me with mercy and steadfast love. Lord, hear my prayer. Let my cry come before you. In honor of Paige and Braylon Slagoski, who will be baptized later outdoors, we hope it warms up a little bit, we're going to sing Morning Cry, and for all those who have taken the sign of the cross on their brow in the baptism, Morning Cry.
please join with me in the prayer of the day. Oh God, you are the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us in the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, kids. How you all doing? Look who I brought with. Fluffy. You want to feel him? Be nice. It's my pet. I bought this for uh, my wife Renee two Christmases ago. She wanted a new dog. <laughs> she went out last Christmas. She actually got a burn a doodle. So, but I like this one. You don't have to clean up. Doesn't bark and not too hairy. So today, we're going to hear from the psalmist. It's a beautiful psalm about animals, in partly, where it says, God knows all the wild animals of the forest. They are his. He knows all the cattle on the hills. They are his. He knows all the birds of the air. They are his. God made the animals before us. If you read the book of Genesis, the story of God's creation, he made them not to enjoy one another, but for us to enjoy them too. What a gift animals are in so many ways, including the pets and the wild animals in the forest. And sometimes now at night we hear the, the loon by the lake, the coyote probably eating something. I'm not going to guess what it is, but they have a fun time with that. So yeah, here's a little song, kids, to remember the animals, okay? It goes like this. Thank you. For giving me the morning, thank you for everything that's new. Thank you for all the animals, a truly gift from you. You want to try that with me? Thank you for giving me the morning. Thank you for every day that's new. Thank you for the all the animals, truly a gift from you. Moo. Now, Art, let's try this. On the count of three, just for fun, let's make the sound of our favorite animal. And Rachel, if you can help me discern what might pop up as number one, okay? We're the judges. <laughs> count of three, your favorite animal sound. One, two. Hey, <laughs> one, two, three. Cat, let's try it one more time. The cat sounded pretty good. One, two, three. <laughs> Sounds like a zoo in here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> let's pray. Thanks, God, for creating us in your own image, for giving us animals to love and bring love and healing to so many. Bless all of us that we might find ways to care for one another and the great creation you've given us. And all God's kids said, Amen. Amen. Thanks to Sandy for reading God's Word with and for us today. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is taken from Hosea 5, 15 and chapter 6, verse 6. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for, he is, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. Oh, what should I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have killed them by the words of my mouth, 
and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than the burnt offerings. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 50, verses 7 through 15. We'll read it responsively. Listen, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your burnt offerings are always before me. I will not accept a calf from your stalls, nor goats from your pens. For all the wild animals of the forest are mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains, and the creatures of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the whole world is mine, and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall honor me. The second reading is taken from Romans 4, 13 through 25. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be, he did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already in, as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the bareness of Sarah's womb, no distrust made him waver according to the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Please stand for the hallelujah. <laughs> Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Matthew 9, 9 through 13, and 18 through 26. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, 
My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. And then suddenly, a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put us outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. This song will tie into the sermon for the day, or at least I hope so. Um, if not, it's a song of uh, my story, which is a story of many of us who are called by Jesus to take up the cross and follow him. soldier of the cross and I won't count it a loss oh no I'm a soldier of the cross I've gripped my hands to the plow And there's no turning back now. No, 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 I'm a soldier of the cross. Lord, my faith, it's resting in thee. You're my anchor in this troubled sea. Come and follow me And you will live eternally mm, I'm a soldier of the cross Lord, my faith is resting in thee you're my anchor in this troubled sea. I'm a soldier of the cross. And I won't count it a loss. No, no, no. I'm a soldier of the cross. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, help us today to hear your call, like you called Matthew, to follow you and know that you call us to adventures that we're not even aware of, but you call us to fish for people that they might know your amazing love and forgiveness. Amen.
It's been said that authors, good authors, can create pictures with their words. If you're a reader, you know what I'm talking about. Or if we hear the gospel writers like Matthew, in today's gospel, for example, you can't help but see the images of a crying father whose daughter has died. We know what that looks like and feels like. Or a woman who's been ill for a dozen years wondering, will she ever find healing? Just stretching out to touch Jesus. And of course, the little girl who's raised from the dead by Jesus. Those are all images you can't help but remember. Or the one for me as I reread this text again this past week in many and different forms with our, uh, our morning text study group that meets at church with family devotions, reading it personally, where Jesus is said reclining with tax collectors and sinners. I'll say that again. Jesus is reclining at the table. They probably had their meal, their drink, they're chilling, reclining, maybe laughing, telling jokes. Tax collectors were like enemies to some of the Jewish people because they were sent by the Roman emperor to get money. Show me the money. And if you don't, give me your goat or your silverware, or you may even be locked up. Well, I guess some of our IRS agents can do that to us, too if we don't show them the money. And the sinners, well, that's up to our imagination, but it could be the adulterers, thieves, prostitutes. They're there with Jesus too. And the holier-than-thou Pharisees are saying, why, why does your master eat with these people? And he quotes the Old Testament prophet who says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I'm not interested in how you wash your hands, how much you tithe to the temple, how you pray in public, how you put on the fancy robe. No, I'm, I'm concerned about the heart. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I don't care about looking good. I care about doing good. Hopefully those Pharisees got that message when Jesus told them that. And those that are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. He was talking about those of us who realize we need healing, not just of our bodies, but our minds and our spirits. It's like the story Tony Campalo tells. I love to retell it. It's one of my favorites. Tony's a gifted preacher, teacher, who was at a church conference in Las Vegas. We know Vegas needs some preaching and teaching, like every city and town in the country. And at the night after the conference, he'd go down to the cafe, have some coffee, and met up with some of the women of the night. Need I say more? <laughs> some of them were selling their bodies just to pay rent or to help keep their kids fed. Probably not a profession they chose, but felt they had to get into to make money. Tony befriended one of them over coffee. Found out it was her birthday. When it was her birthday, he bought a cake. Invited some of the other folks to join a, a happy birthday rendition. And the woman was crying. She said, nobody had ever done that for me. She was touched to the heart by this Christian compassion and care. On the way out, when Tony was paying the bill and, and the clerk was asking uh, what he was doing there, you know, he's at a church conference, and you know what kind of woman that was? You were, you were buying the, yeah. Well, what kind of church are you from? Tony said, I'm from a church that throws parties for prostitutes, for sinners. Are we that kind of church? I think so. You threw a party last week for this guy. <laughs> well, you all know I'm a sinner. I strayed from the fold. I left the flock. I thought man was in charge of his own destiny until I heard that call of Jesus saying, come and follow me. 
Come and follow me. I heard that voice through his word, through other people, through that still, small voice. And I did. I was in the army at the time in Mannheim, Germany. That's where that song came. I was a soldier in the army, and then I realized I was also called to be a soldier in the army of God, to march to the beat of a different drummer, not like the world marches, but actually goes against the grain. An eye for an eye, no. A tooth for a tooth, no. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Lay down your life for others. Don't seek to save your own life. All of that hit home like a lightning flash. And that was the beginning for, for me to sense a call to, to be active in the church and maybe even become a pastor. That's another story that took 10 years and lots of grace and encouragement. And one of the holy privileges over the years of being a pastor, and that party was thrown last week to celebrate 40 years with Robinson sisters singing an original song, chancel choir singing an original song, I did it, guys, way, yeah, well, with a lot of help from God and Bruce Camrath on that one. There was... Lefsa, Kronzakaka, cake, Norwegian coffee. There were praises and accolades from people from other churches, cards and, I mean, it was, it was too much for this small town boy, but I appreciate it and thank you all. And somebody said, you know, we should do that every week for every member of the church. I said, that's, that's a good idea. Like Arthur comes up one Sunday, and we give all the good stories, right? Keep the bad ones under the vest. <laughs> but we do. We celebrate each and every one every day that God has given us. And one of the holy privileges for me being a pastor is to see you and others I've served every day in everyday life being ministers for Christ in daily life, using your hands, your hearts, your eyes and feet, to reach out to others with love and compassion, to bring comfort to those who are afflicted and grieving, to give food and water to the, for the, to the hungry and the poor in our communities, to stitch quilts for people around the world, to use your gifts and talents to help keep the church going and the community alive and well to teach our children and to protect them in a world which has much danger. And our children, God bless them, how they show love for God and for one another. In this past year, they collected hundreds of dollars during their Sunday school. Guess where that money's going? To the Humane Society. <laughs> where animals are sheltered, given love and care, and, and some people come and rescue them, like my daughter did, a, a little shepherd, Nala, who joined us last Sunday, one-year-old. Our pup is one-year-old. One of the more joyous moments of the day, they are both running off the dock, playing in the water, splashing, doing it again, splashing, maybe for an hour. I thought, what joy God gives us just to be with animals. They look like drunken sailors an hour later, just sprawled out, pooped. <laughs> God wants us to have joy, doesn't God? Yeah, that's what the Bible says. That's why Jesus died, rose again, that we might know the joy of life that goes on, not only for Jesus, but for you and me for eternity. Or like the little girl Jesus raised up, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though you die, which we will, you shall live forever and ever. And today, O oh Lord, help us to know that in you there is life, not only now but for eternity, and that you have called us to reach out to all people with love and healing and help them follow you. In your name we pray. Amen.
Rachel, what are we singing next? Day by day. day, by day. <laughs> Let's join together in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's join together now in prayer. and. The uh, beautiful bouquet on the altar is in celebration of Ramon Langman's 90th birthday. So we wish and pray a blessed day for Ramon as she celebrates. Let us pray. Almighty God, we do confess before you and one another today that we are sinners. We've fallen short of your glory. We've not always loved you with our whole heart and our neighbors as ourselves. So we do pray for forgiveness and thank you that by the death of your son and his resurrection, you promise us forgiveness and everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless our church here and throughout the world today, especially where there's persecution and oppression, where there's schism and conflict. Pray for all of our leaders and servants that we might be emboldened to call others to follow you and help us, we pray, every day, day by day, to grow in the grace that you show us in Christ 
Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear the cries of your people wherever they are today who cry out for justice, for peace, for bread, for comfort, for healing, and that you would use us to be instruments of your healing here and throughout the world today. And pray for the peacemakers who stand in harm's way today. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, be with those who mourn today. Especially we pray for the family and friends of James Genota, whose funeral was yesterday, and others to be comforted by your spirit and cling to the hope of the resurrection to everlasting life where one day we will be reunited with those that have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we pray for those we know to be ill and hospitalized, those facing and recovering from surgeries, undergoing treatments, those who are ill at home. We continue to pray for Tina Langman's uncle, Jerry. Continue to be with Vicki Anderson, be with Jim Gordon, Daryl Skog and Bob Berg. Be with Donna Lindbaum and Sherman Tofar. Be with Daryl Bauman's uncle, Whitey. Be with Oscar Skog and Harry Bergman and others we name before you today for strength and healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So please sign with me now. I'm a child of God. I'm loved by God. And I'm not alone. Don't hit too hard there. <laughs> At this time, we'll receive our offerings unto the Lord. The noisy buckets go to our youth and family ministries. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us, 
ourselves and our time, our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in the world, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup, it's the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And when you pray, our Lord said, pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the Lord's Supper today. You can come and stand or kneel at the altar, receive the elements of the communion. There's gluten-free wafers in the bread tray. There's wine or grape juice in the center of the wine tray. Please be seated. Communion stewards, please come forward.
Let us pray. We thank you, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to heal us and forgive us, to strengthen us and keep us in your grace, and at the last, bring us to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us your peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We want to say welcome to Pastor Ron Garrow, who's with us. You want to rise, Ron? I know you don't want to, but come on. Give him a hand. Ron has been the uh, interim pastor at New Scandinavia Lutheran Church, our neighboring church, and he's also taught a lay pastoral training class, uh, Karen Thiesfeld, took part and graduated from that. And he said he's going to do it again this fall. So we'll look forward to that announcement. And pray for Pastor Sarah Feld, who's now the uh, new pastor at New Scandinavia Lutheran Church. We pray for her ministry and the ministry of the New Scandinavians. We're invited uh, Tuesday night to the uh, uh, Sons of Norway, Dover Lodge. They meet here, second Tuesday. And they've invited a... Um, Professor Emeritus Don Pearson, Doug Pearson, to talk about Valdemar Auger. Anybody remember that name? No, you're all too, too young. But he was here in Chatech. He was an author, a prohibitionist. So if you want to find out about Valdemar Auger, we're invited Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. There's a potluck meal and then a program. And then it's hard to believe this young guy can retire, but Pastor Keith Relo who spent a good 10, 12 years here, I believe, uh, back in the days, retiring June 25th at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Amory. There's a 9 o'clock worship and then a 10.30 uh, program celebration for Keith and Lisa and their family. We're all invited to that. We all pray for them and their church. And then next Sunday, just if you didn't know, it's Father's Day. So remember to say Happy Father's Day and remember all those 
that have shown us fatherly love and mentoring in our lives. I think we're ready for the, oh, also there's coffee and uh, homemade muffins. I saw downstairs, Lucy and Marlis have cooked up some muffins. You're all welcome. Adult Bible study meets in the office wing following worship. Our closing hymn, let's rise as we're able. My life flows on. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace with one another in the name of Christ. We go in peace to serve the Lord.